I've got a really cool power supply in my hands that you guys will want to check out. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Rig Experts Shackmaster Power 500 power supply. I do have to give a shout out to Gigaparts for sending this over to me for this review. Now, unfortunately, I don't get to keep it. I got to send it back to Gigaparts, but it is really awesome that they're willing to send out these devices for us to check out. Taking a look at the specs of this thing, it puts out 13.8 volts, 500 watts, and 35 amps. The input voltage has a range of 80 to 264 volts. It includes over voltage protection, over temperature protection, over current protection, and short circuit protection. Taking a look at the back of the device, you've got your main power input here. You've got your master power switch right here. In addition, you've got two Anderson power poles on the back of the device, as well as binding post. You'll also see a USB-C here that's reserved for programming this power supply. On the front of the device, we've got two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, and two additional Anderson power poles, as well as the LED screen in the center. So let's go ahead and power this thing up and take a look at the features. When I flip the main power switch, you're going to see the brand name of it and the serial number of the device. And then it will simply show a clock. To turn on the power supply, we can swipe the screen and then swipe again. That will bring you into the main screen here where it's telling you the total watts and amps that are being pulled from the power supply at any given moment. From the main screen, you can swipe to get to other screens. This one here tells us the voltage that it's currently putting out and how much power is being drawn from the device. Let's go ahead and swipe up again. This time, you're going to see what the auxiliary power, the USB power, if you will, is putting out. Currently, it's sitting at 5 volts and 0 amps. Let's swipe up one more time. And this is going to give you the site information. So I'm getting 121 volts, 120 to 121, from my household supply. And the current temperature of the unit is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it shows us the power in Hertz. Now, give me just a second. I'll connect a radio so you can see a few more of the readings. All right, so now I've got the 891 connected. Let's go ahead and fire that up. And you'll see that it's pulling a total of 13 watts and one amp. Let's go ahead and swipe up to the next screen. You'll see the power here being output is 13.7 volts. And again, it's pulling one amp. One more swipe up and it will give us the auxiliary power, which currently has nothing connected to it. Let's go ahead and swipe up again. And again, we're seeing the site power, 120 volts at 59.9 hertz. To power the unit off, again, we could swipe and turn the unit off, or we can also press and hold to turn it off. Once it's turned off, you're just going to go back to the screen with a clock on it. So what are my final thoughts on this new power supply? Well, I've got some likes and some dislikes. A, I love the fact that you can run it in either a horizontal or a vertical format. That makes it a lot easier to fit into just about anybody's shack. Having Anderson power poles on both the front and the back is a huge advantage as far as I'm concerned. This allows me to use the ones on the back as my primary that would power my shack, but also be able to sit down and plug into the front of it if I just wanted to test a piece of gear or maybe recharge a battery. Having those extra USB-A and USB-C ports is another advantage when it comes to recharging different devices. Speaking of those USB ports, I also connected up a Raspberry Pi 4 and it ran that Pi without any issues. However, the voltage did sag just a little bit. It was hovering between 4.8 and 4.9 volts. While I didn't get any low voltage warnings with the Raspberry Pi 4, it might give us some problems with the uh, new power requirements of the Raspberry Pi 5. And finally, I really like that new display. The ability to cycle through and see this different statistics 
could really prove useful in the shack. So what do I not like about the device? Well, first of all, I'm a Linux and Mac user. When I tried to download software uh, to program up this new power supply, there's nothing available for Linux. Now, we might could run the Windows software under Wine on Linux, but I didn't bother trying that. There was a version for the Mac, though, so I did go ahead and download it. Unfortunately, I ran into errors as soon as I tried to install that application. In addition, I was really hoping that those USB ports on the front would put out a little bit more voltage uh, than that 4.8 and 4.9. I think if we were able to get a little bit more voltage out of it, it would be rock solid for running Raspberry Pis. And finally, one place that I kind of feel they missed the boat is I was unable to get power delivery out of those USB-C ports. So it's stuck at 5 volts. When I plugged in something that was asking for 12 volts, well, it just wouldn't do it. It only gave me 5 volts. Is that a deal killer? No, not necessarily, but it would just be nice if they included that power delivery option in those USB-C ports. So there you have it, guys. There's a look at the new Rig Experts power supply. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.